Of all the areas in medicine a nurse can focus on as a career, obstetrics has perhaps the greatest need for caring, flexible professionals who keep up with the latest in nursing research and technologies. This includes the latest fetal monitoring techniques and equipment. A generation ago, the only monitoring systems available to most women in labor were the nurse's eyes, ears, and hands. As time passed, advances in external fetal monitoring devices developed, such as the fetoscope, or bone conduction device, and the Doppler. Advanced internal monitoring devices were also developed for high-risk pregnancies. The current monitoring technology used every day in this country by labor and delivery nurses is Electronic Fetal Monitoring, or EFM. Nurses who use electronic fetal monitoring need to understand and recognize fetal heart rate patterns, beat-to-beat -beat variability and uterine activity, and should use accepted terms to describe these patterns. It is especially important to document reassuring and non-reassuring changes in heart rate patterns, as well as the fetal response to actions taken to treat the non-reassuring changes. And it is important that the nurse documents uterine activity. The monitor tracing, or its electronic counterpart, is a legal part of the patient's medical record. As such, it should include identifying information and times and events related to the patient's care. The nurse identifies non-reassuring tracings and is responsible for initiating appropriate nursing actions and for notifying a physician. Once the nurse notifies the physician, a timely response should be expected. The two modes of electronic fetal monitoring include the external mode, which uses transducers placed on the maternal abdomen to assess uterine activity and the fetal heart rate, and the internal mode, which uses internal devices to accomplish this. Once the patient arrives in the labor and delivery department and has changed into a patient gown, external fetal monitoring transducers are placed on her abdomen. When placing a fetal monitor, the nurse first locates the fetal back by palpating the mother's abdomen. The fetal back is a smooth, continuous surface, usually to one side of the abdomen. The nurse places a small amount of ultrasound gel on the ultrasonic transducer and positions it over the fetal back. This is where the fetal heart rate will be heard most clearly. The transducer is held firmly in place by a soft belt around the abdomen. With current technology, the recording from a well-placed ultrasonic transducer is very accurate. It picks up the movement of the valves in the baby's heart, which is transformed by the monitor into an audible output and a visual tracing. Next, the nurse places the TOCO transducer, or TOCO, over the fundus of the patient's uterus. It is also held in place by a belt. The TOCO has a pressure-sensitive surface on the side next to the abdomen, which picks up the pattern of the patient's contractions and records them on the monitor strip. The TOCO can measure and record the frequency and duration of contractions, but not their intensity. The monitor tracing is divided into upper and lower parts. The upper part shows the fetal heart rate, while the lower part shows uterine activity. The portions are divided into grids. Each horizontal line on the heart rate grid indicates an increase of 10 beats per minute in the fetal heart rate as you move up the grid. The vertical line indicates intervals of time. As you move across the tracing, the light lines indicate the intervals of 10 seconds and the darker lines intervals of 60 seconds when the paper speed is 3 centimeters per minute. A typical contraction appears as a waveform. The amplitude of the contraction depends on the tightness of the belt, the amount of adipose tissue and amniotic fluid between the uterine wall and the toco, the fetal position, the maternal position, and the strength of the contraction. Sometimes internal fetal monitoring may be indicated when maternal or fetal factors make obtaining consistent readable tracing difficult. Signal disruptions can occur due to maternal obesity, fetal malpresentation, or fetal activity. 
For this type of monitoring, the membranes must be ruptured and the cervix sufficiently dilated to allow attachment of a small electrode to the fetal presenting part, usually the head.